Okay, I'm over on the bench with one of our old hubs off the Massey 65, and you can see with our big heavy cast centres, we had longer wheel studs. So when we're replacing a couple of these hubs, which we need to do, um, we need to replace the wheel studs, which I have here. Now, if you you may recall that one of our one of our stubs here had all the seal surface worn off it. And so there was no hope of putting this back seal in once we, um, yeah, once we put new bearings and all that in. So I opted for replacing two hubs, replace them both. These, this hub here will go over with the weights and be sold with them at some later date. But um, yeah, I, I've, I've opted to replace the pair and the two companies that I could find that had nice looking hubs with the six, um, what would you call that, webs or something like that, were Sparex and Quality, Quality Tractor Parts in Ireland. So as Sparex didn't have any of these in Australia, but they had them overseas and we could have waited and got them in, but it, you know, it would have been um, uh, quite a wait. But in my stock at Queensland Tractor Spares, I actually had can you see that? I had a quality tractor parts, 898085. And it says it's for an MF35, but I've actually had a, uh, I've had a good look and a measure and all that sort of thing. And, and look, it's, it's the same hub, um, apart from a couple of Massey Ferguson numbers being cast into the front here. It's the same hub. It looks to be well made. Um, the hub from Sparex, looks to be the exact same hub to me. I think it is. Um, yeah, it, it just looks that way. So we'll see how that goes. Now, I, I suppose there's a couple of things we need to cover. Now, on your old hub, to get the bearings out, it'll be easier to see on this big end. Can you see, see that gap there? So you can come in with a punch from the back here and knock your old bearings out. There's one on each side, so you just knock the bearings and seals out. There's the same on the front bearing, so you can come in from the back and knock your bearings out if I can. The camera's up high and I'm bloody having trouble seeing it. But, um, so you knock the old bearings out, you wash the hub up, you get all the old gungy old grease and shit from out of in here, get rid of all that and um, yeah, get ready for, well, getting your hub ready. Now, the, the back bearing that goes in here, it goes fat side in first, and the dolly I have, or the disc I have for fitting that is 62 millimeters. Now, last time I did some wheel bearings, um, I got some comments saying that, oh, it's all right, you know, what are you using all your special tools for? Everyone doesn't have that. Well, this kit, with the, it comes with a punch and a heap of different size um, discs. You can buy them on eBay and Amazon for like 50 and $60. So, you know, it's not, it's not a major expense. So, yeah, just criticising because of that is just silly. So, the, the 49 millimetre disc seems to suit the outer bearing. So, it has to be able to... Pop in there, pop in there, push the bearing in without going crooked and damaging this thread here. We need that thread for the grease cup later. So there's a bit of a snug fit that, anyway. So there we go. The seal, um, the back seal that sits in the housing here. Um, we'll do a bit of a measurement there later, just out of interest. But the only thing I could find in my workshop to fit it was a three-quarter drive, two-inch socket. And that fits there nicely. And it just, just goes down there flat. So I'm going to have to make sure I stop um, pressing or hitting just, just as that comes down central there. I suppose I could always grind a bit of a chamfer on here, which... Yeah, may be reasonable. So, so yeah, the outside diameter of my two-inch three-quarter drive socket fits. It's only a made-in-China brand. It's nothing special. Um, 
So we'll pop that over there for the moment. I'll sit the seal up on there. These fellas will sit out of the way. I do have a little bit of shadow happening today. Um, but anyway, that's just how it is. So what I might try and do first is fit a couple of these wheel studs. Now, to fit the wheel studs, there's, there's 20 ways of doing it. Um, I'll try and show you a couple at least. And um, one of them, and look, this is fairly easy. This is probably a good idea if the tractor is still, or if the hub is still on the tractor. And all you do is get a big hammer, just start the stud, like, and all you're looking at is so it doesn't turn. Then I like to put, the, put a spare front wheel nut on backwards. And I usually like to put a bit of oil on. Hang on, I'll just dip my finger in the oil here. You all want to turn now, don't you? Okay, so put that there. Now, the reason I've got the nut on backwards, there is a little chamfer here, but when the chamfer goes down, your stud has a chamfer here too. So I'm going to try and draw it in as far as I can just with the flat here. So by the time I line that up and bring my, we'll just do a test run here. If I take that nut down as far as I possibly can, I'll see I'm still not 100% home. So I may have to make a little washer, but you can just use a nut like that. You can have a little piece of pipe around there. Yeah, I only say five millimeters to draw it in, but I'll just start drawing it in. I'll probably give it a smack when it's, once I know it's, it's true enough. Nothing wrong with giving things a good smack, eh? Okay, so, so, and the main thing with this video is just to give you a clue of, of how to do stuff, really. So if I get my handy dandy nut gun onto here, So you can see that stud. You can see that stud is, if I bring it up here, you might. It's pretty well in. It's, it's not quite, but look, it's, it's very close. Probably a bit of a, and that's home for sure. So it does work um, like that. Um, I'll just rattle this off again. And there's me drop. Hey, I've got to have a drop every video or you know it's not, a, not an original Bundy Bear Shed video if there's no drops. So the, on, the, on the spline on the stud here, that actually moves a little bit of metal off the cast. And so when you um, pull it through, like on mine there, there was just a little bit of cast there to clean out, a little, a little bit of swarth, I suppose you would say. So that's one way of doing it. The other way to do it is on the vise here. That's an old gudgeon pin. I'm putting that one in first. That goes down into the bottom. And then I'm putting this one up here just to... And the bottom one's just to give us something to hit on, so because this wasn't long enough. And look, it's as simple as pop the stud on. And there you go. So I'll just. So look, there's plenty of ways of doing it. That's just a couple just to let you know how to do it or you know, a couple of options to do it. Um, Using the nut with a little piece of pipe, you know, just to draw it out a bit's fine, but my nut worked here okay. But for the rest of these studs, one, two, three, four, no, one, two, three. Look at that, I've lost one already. It's not hard to lose stuff on my dirty old bench here. There it is, stop looking, I found it. So, look, I'll pop those in. And it's just, um, yeah, it's just not a big job really. So
make sure they're right home and because it's a machine surface on the back of the nut here or on the back of the stud here and a machine surface here you know it's going to be square look at that my thing fell out it's a bugger when your thing falls out isn't it i'll see if i can just get enough out of it to do no i can't anything we'll just do it here And that's all done. That's the studs in. Okay, the grease we're going to put here is LSA. They sponsor the channel. Lithium complex grease. I buy this stuff. They don't give it to me. They give me a bit of oil, but that's about it. But um, yeah, general purpose automotive and industrial uses, including wheel bearing lubrication for conventional and high speed tapered bearings and operations under arduous conditions. So that's the go. Um, that stuff there seems to work well. So it's a blue grease, so. But look, what we do, you stick your finger in. You get a heap of grease on your hand and you drag the bearing through it. And you drag the bearing through it until the other grease comes right out the other side. So I sort of, you wipe it on your bottom of your hand there. I've probably got too much here, but that's all right. And you just keep wiping, wiping, wiping. Until, see in there I can actually see the rollers with no grease still. So we have to pack and pack and pack and push it in. Kids love this job. Some kids love it, some hate it. They hate getting their hands dirty. Now, as far as wheel bearings go, tractors have very slow moving wheel bearings as in you know the speeds aren't great so i'll do this one while we're going bit too much grease here but anyway that's all right i don't really care and so the idea is just to make sure that that grease is right in the bearing it's absolutely chockers now just take some of this off put him in that reservoir too much length anyway it doesn't matter hey so i would you like to grab a bit and paste around inside there um, I like to cover all the cast up so if it ever gets moisture it's not going to rust but then the other idea of it all is if the bearing ever gets hot and the grease gets a bit runny um, you know, it'll, it'll, keep the it'll keep the bearing lubricated if it gets out of adjustment or something like that so so look a bit of oil that, that cavity is not entirely full it doesn't need to be so we'll pop that down like that now what I like to do here is just wipe around it and because it gets hard to put your finger in I just run the run the knife around when I learn to cut straight And we put the cap back on. So even though I cut it crooked, that keeps that grease nice and clean. You haven't got a hand and open and you can just dip it in. You know, use it as a bench grease, isn't it? Obviously it's no good for the bloody grease gun anymore, but that's all right. Okay, so with this back bearing, we can pop the bearing in, like sit him in like that. Give him a bit of a turn, make sure it's home. And with our seal here, I'll just give that a wipe just to make sure there's no swarth on it. So you put a little bit of grease in the, where the sealing surface is. Now this is a twin lip seal, it's got a dirt excluding seal there and a 
the spring in here. The spring goes to the grease, of course. So I'll just wipe my hands up a little bit. And wipe this socket out a little bit. Okay, it's got some dust and shit in there, which it probably has. And we'll bring this seal just down below the edge, just a little bit. I think I need to bring this side down a bit. It's important with this seal, as with all seals, to have it even right around there. So, so when we look at this, the reason I have this over here now is this is one of our new stub axles. So the back of the bearing sits in this groove here. So I had a little ruler here a moment ago. I'll use it. There, the back of the bearing, the radius sits here. And then you have a flat surface for about 10 millimetres for the seal. So what I try and look at when I'm doing this job, and oh, I don't know how important it is, but it's just, you know, you get your little, get your little habits over the years. So from that lip to where the machining has stopped out here on this one, we have a bit over 10 mil. 7 16th roughly. So what I like to do now is with that bearing down in is stick my ruler there, have a look. And look, I'm pretty well bang on there. So um, you can see there's a machine surface there. Often this is a little bit different. There's, often this machine surface goes right to the end, but where the bearing sits there, um, the back of the bearing, the main seal will seal about there somewhere. So a couple of millimetres in, and then the, the dirt excluding one. Well, from the, from the back of the seal to the lip is three millimetres. So when we come in three millimetres, it'll seal about there. And the outer will be just on the edge of that there. So I may just take this in a, a little more. I should have ground that socket, shouldn't I? And what have I got there? It's about five millimetres. Pretty close to five mil, three sixteenth. Okay, so that there, now, I'll put this stub axle in the vise. Now, I do have aluminium soft jaws in this vise. So, I'll bring you down so you can actually see it a bit better. There we go. So, I'll tighten that right, right up. And it won't mark this because of... I have aluminium in the jaws, so so with wiping this all clean, this can now come down over the top. There we go. This bearing here can go in. So that outer bearing there, that's the one that does the adjustment. And we put the, I'll just keep it clean so you can see. So from here, yeah, we put a washer on and we do the bearing adjustment. So um, yeah, I'll get set up and we'll just do that. Okay, we've got our bearing all sitting in, our hub sitting on our stub axle. Now this can be either on the tractor or in a bench like I have. I have it in the bench just to show you what I'm doing. So 
we have a, a tab washer. Now there's a, there's a tab on the top of our axle here on our stub. So that goes down. That's a little bit tight. Let's have a look. May have to. Okay, there's a little problem that I've just found that I wasn't aware of. So with the Sparex stub axle here, maybe that keyway is not quite deep enough. So as I bring the washer in, you can see I'm touching there, but it doesn't want to come down the back there. And I don't want to force it, so I'm going to just file the top. Yeah, file the top off that, just to give me a little bit of clearance. It's close, like I could bump that and get that on. But it's close. But anyway, hang there for a sec. I'll fix that. Okay. So I've been over and I've just taken a little bit. You can see the shine on there. I've just taken a tad off that. There wasn't much, but it had to be done. Look at that. That slides down there nicely now. And then we put the nut on. Now, I've got an inch and a quarter socket on an old half inch drive ratchet, so so just do it up. You can just see, look, I've got my hand in close there. I'm not putting much on that, but I've just nipped it up firm. Now, turn it, say, seven or eight times. And why we're doing that is that all the rollers, you know, when we've put it in there, they might be a bit crooked or something like that. We're just making sure they're all home. And... There's no movement there. Now what I like to do from here is give it a little bit. So say from where you first are, give it, oh look, an eighth to a quarter of a turn and turn it again. Now, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it, it is definitely firmer to turn. And once again, give it a few good runs around both ways. Um, we're just making sure that our bearings are right home. That um, I'll give it a bit of a. That's just making sure that all the cups are in. Like we thought we had them in fine, and, and we have no reason to believe we didn't. So that's that's not too bad. So, we have a hole going through here for the split pin. Now, I believe I'm just too tight there now. Some of these have, or well, the Sparex Kingpin has one hole going through. Some I've seen have two, um, you know, one at crossroads so you can get a finer adjustment. So what I'm going to do from here is back that off until until I can get this through again. So I've gone one castellation and you can see that's almost running on. There's no, there's no movement. So that's the correct adjustment for that bearing. So we push our pin in. I'd just like to bump it in a little bit. like that and so for that nut to undone undo we've got to shear off two pieces there then I split this split pin I'll just grab my um, side cutters <coughs> got some nice new ones. Nice new Renegade. They're a trade tools brand. Where are we? There. <laughs> so yeah, I like to bring this one right over.
knock it down. Then this one here, I just cut off flush. So that's adjusted up, that's all we need to do. Now the cup here, this is our old cup. Now on my tractor, one had a plain cap like this and one had a one with a grease nipple in it. So Ross that works with us at Queensland Tractor Spares, he's got a Mark 265. So I said, hey Ross, can you go and have a look at yours and see if you've got um, grease nipple or no grease nipple? And bugger me, he's got one of each as well. So, so I'm going to actually pull all this off and this will all be sandblasted, ready for paint. Um, not the hub, just the, just the cap here. And in some of the early tractors I've pulled apart, there is a little gasket here. The little gasket goes around there, just a small paper gasket. I'm not going to use a paper gasket. Um, I don't believe I need to. On this surface here, you've got a nice flat surface to seal there. Um, if I know I'm going through water and things like that, um, I actually just put a dab of um, you know, your 515 Loctite on here. And I just nip him right up like that. And away you go. So when you're in a field or a, a paddock situation, you nip that up nice and tight now, put your wheel on, away you go. Drive around with a big grin. So there you go. That's the video on just doing the front hub. I've obviously, I have another one to do. Um, the kingpin bushes. Now, you saw me knock them out, but it's been raining like buggery here. I haven't been able to film, but I've actually pushed them in. Um, and it, look, it was just a matter of using a little dolly like we use for the ball bearings, or for the tapered roller bearings here, the wheel bearings. And um, I just bumped them in, but being Sparex, they didn't need reaming. So we'll have a look at that shortly, eh?